Welcome to the next part here in this chat room um, application. We are doing in, uh, this uh, for our students at Erasmus School Brussels. Uh, and of course, this is again Spring Boot and Kotlin all together. Now we have created our endpoints in the user controller to get all employees, uh, which is, we should be get all users. Uh, still the office, again, good show, but we need to actually make sure <laughs> that our functions are logically called. So get all users, this should be fine. We have everything like this. And the next part would be that we add some more models to it and, you know, get some relations up and running. There is some tricky stuff that, that you need to watch out for when you first do this, but I will guide you through it uh, all the same. Now, our objective is to allow new messages to be created in multiple chat rooms. So when I want to chat and my chat room is uh, Kotlin nerds, for example, then I would send a message with a text value, say hi all from my user, which is ID one, for example, and to the, the chat room called Kotlin nerds. If that chat room does not exist, we need to create it. It needs to verify if my user exists, otherwise you cannot be allowed to post. And uh, if it works, we need to send it back uh, and make sure that the message is saved into a database with the correct relations to it. Now there's a, different in a difference in relations. When we talk about relations in Kotlin, we can say a property has a certain class as um, type. But of course, those types do not exist in a database. So how do we solve that and make sure that we can refer by ID, etc.? We will start with creating the new models and reworking our structure a bit so we can um, set up our correct relations. The first thing we're going to do is create our two new models. Now we have chat room with which is chat room regular data class because we're all, all also going to be persisting this and we have a message message is a data class and of course now we can have some basic values so for example the message is going to be annotated as at entity because we also going to be persisting that and it has the same types of values. So it also has an ID long that is generated again, same logic here, minus one. So it automatically is filled in. Kotlin really doesn't like, doesn't like zero uh, types or null types. A message has a value, a text as it were, and a timing so that we can sort on time when we want to uh, show it on our front end, for example. That's it. That's our message for now. And then we have the chat room. The chat room itself has the same things also has the at entity and it has some properties. So in this case, again, an ID, a name, because the name of the chat room is important and maybe an icon URL that you can add. This is for flavor, of course. Now we have those models. We are going to relocate this request in a different folder called uh, a DTO. Uh, DTO are, is a data transfer object and is meant as some sort of layer between your REST controller and your models. So as explained before, this is important so that when we allow data to be sent to the endpoint, and even as you would see in a second, uh, as a response from an endpoint, we don't want to have the full object returned at all times. Sometimes we just need an app, um, a, a, a wrapper around it that makes it easier to work with and doesn't have all the unnecessary data. Now, before you, you see a sketch of how the relations are to be set up between these entities. Now, if you're new to relations in, in, in databases, of course, you need the basics, but I'll try to go over them uh, as simple as possible. Um, in human language, a hu one user can have one or multiple messages and a message belongs to one user. Again, going further from that, a user can be a part of one or more chat rooms or even zero and a chat room can have one or more users. 
This is again, it's just human language, doesn't have anything to do with SQL. But the last one, of course, a chat room has one or more messages, but a message only belongs to one chat room. Now that we have that in our minds, even maybe, maybe take a screenshot, uh, just draw this and have this memorized because now we are going to actually be implementing it on the developer side. So uh, let's start with our user. That's the, the, the most useful one. So user has some relations. The relations we're mostly going to be um, making in not in our constructor because the relations are going to be added later. They're not going to be the, the moment you create a user. It does not have a forced relation at that point. If it does, you need best to do it manually in the service. Now it has two relations. Again, if we take the, um, the, the picture, we have user to chat room again, a many to many relation. A user can have, can be part of many chat rooms. A chat room can have many users. So this is a many to many relations. So that means we need to have some sort of list in here that uh, holds all our chat rooms. So var chat rooms, again, try to use the logical names. And this is going to be a list of chat room objects. Of course, we need to instantiate this in initially, it's going to be an empty list. Basic type should not be a container. That's fine by me, but we need to annotate this and then it will stop complaining because then it will realize this is a many to many relationship. This will automatically create a table that is called a pivot table or um, uh, a join table as well that will contain IDs of the user and IDs of the chat room to keep track of who is, is linked to whom. If we go further, one user can have multiple one user can have multiple messages a message can have one user so let's immediately no let's keep off from messages my mistake again you have multiple ways of implementing this you can do everything at once or you can do it object by object let's do it object by object for the first time we have a list of chat rooms of course if you go to chat room that also needs an implementation so chat room is going to have a list of users. So users list of user. Again, make sure you have the correct user imported uh, or better yet, if it doesn't have any import, then it means it's the correct user. We're going to persist this, oh, sorry, um, in, in, initialize this. And we're going to add the many to many annotation. So at the moment, our relation has been satisfied. We have both uh, sides uh, in order. Now, if, if you only want to save or store the data at the user side, that's perfectly possible. Uh, but I like to do a bi-directional one so I can work with different types of data. If I have a chat room ID, I can get all the users. If I have uh, a user ID, I can get all his chat rooms. If it was only one directional, no pun intended for the group. If it's only, for example, chat room and users, if I have a user ID, then I have to go query the chat rooms to see where he or she is located in. With this double relation, you can start from any object. Now we're in here anyway. So a chat room has a, if I'm not mistaken, a one to many relationship to the messages. So one chat room has multiple messages. So that means I have a list of messages in here. Messages, list, message. And of course we are going to default this to something. And now the tricky thing comes, is it one to many or many to one? Well, think about, think about it this way. The first object in here is the, the first um, word into the relation. So one chat room can have many messages. So one to many at one too many. If we go to messages, let's follow the, the, the chain. A message can have only one chat room. Now, again, open var chat room. It only has one chat room. 
and this is the reverse relation. So multiple messages, many messages can have one chat room. So many to one. One thing to note in here is that, of course, we don't have any initialization in here. We don't want to create an empty chat room because the chat room does not exist. This message is dependent on if there is a chat room. If there is no chat room, this message can not exist. So we're going to add the late init to it. That means that the moment the message is created, at that point, we can still add the chat room after we, we, we do some checking and then save it afterwards. And the last thing we need to do here, of course, we have the we have created the user to chat room relation bidirectional. We have created the chat room to message bidirectional. Now the only thing that's left left is the message to the user. So can you guess what type of relation message has to the user? I will wait a couple of seconds so you can utter the uh, the answer and then see if you're right. You are correct. This is a many to one relationship. Many messages can belong to one user. So open, I immediately going to do the late init as well. User. And we are adding many to one. Always use the capitalization and we are done. Now this works. This had, um, you can test this in like dummy code, for example. The one thing to do is actually create uh, an, an endpoint like test and then create some messages and uh, go from there. We are now going to create a new controller, the, the chat controller that does everything for chat. And we're going to add two functionalities. We are going to add a new message functionality so you can actually chat of course the main purpose and we are uh, going to get all messages to see if everything uh, works